Okay, so today we're going to talk about hormone and balance, okay? Now, just to make this very complex subject very simple, the endocrine system as a whole is basically the superior communication system. It has various glands that make and send hormones through the blood, and hormones are communications. So they're sent, received, and they transmit back in kind of a circuit. They're, it's called feedback loops. So that when the information gets back, then the gland can stop sending that message. If there's any type of uh, problem along this pathway, uh, hormones can actually go up or go down. So we call that hyper or hypo. So if it's uh, too much in the thyroid, it would be a condition called hyperthyroidism. If it's too low, it'll be hypothyroid. And it happens with pretty much all the different hormones, okay? They're very sensitive to the environment, uh, especially chemicals, chemicals in our food, medications, pesticides, insecticides, toxins, because a lot of those chemicals in the environment are called endocrine disruptors. And that's because the glands and hormones, a lot of them are made from fat. And so um, a lot of the chemicals are fat soluble. So they kind of get stuck in there, the receptors, and they block it and they disrupt the normal flow of communication in the body. Also, there are other things, especially like with the adrenal hormones, um, that are very sensitive to stresses, uh, emotional stresses, losses, physical stresses, trauma, surgery, that can alter the adrenal gland. As far as estrogen goes, the ovary is very sensitive to uh, things in our food, especially hormones. So if you're consuming commercial dairy, for example, that has hormones, it has other chemicals, growth hormones, um, it can be greatly influenced. Also, birth control pills, hormonal uh, replacement therapy. Back in the 50s, there was something called DES, diethylstabestrol, and that was a very powerful estrogen that was supposed to prevent miscarriages until they found out 30 years later uh, it causes miscarriages, okay? So it created a lot of problems. Of course, they kept it on the market for 10 years later and for giving it to animals. And of course, you were eating the animals. So if you were born um, before 1979, you probably were exposed to it. And it creates a lot of problems with our own body. GMO foods has the herbicide called glyphosate which also creates a lot of problems within our endocrine system as well. Uh, when you go through menopause, you have this backup organ to the ovaries, which is the adrenal glands. And if the adrenal glands are not functioning, if they're weakened, if they're stressed, if they're fatigued going through menopause, um, then it can't act as a backup to the ovaries because the adrenal glands make the same hormones as the ovaries. And they're meant to back it up, not in the same amounts that you actually have when you're not in menopause, but the fact is, if that backup does not occur, then you get symptoms of deficiencies or sometimes even excess amounts of hormones because estrogen works with progesterone. So I don't wanna get into that complexity, but I just wanna let you know there's a lot of things that can interfere with the gland. And so when dealing with either a hyper or hypo hormone, a lot of times you can get lost in the forest. You have to take a bird's eye view and look at the whole scene and I recommend support the gland, not the hormone, because the hormone is just a communication. It does what the gland tells it to do. Um, so a lot of people kind of ignore the gland itself and they don't actually support like the adrenal gland, for example. They're trying to manipulate the end product down here in the chain of events. The thyroid is um, usually secondary to other things because you have the situation where the thyroid produces hormones but they're inactive, they're T4. They don't really uh, do anything unless they're activated through the liver and gallbladder and the kidney. So 80% of the thyroid hormone, T4, it has to be converted into an active form, T3, through that, those two things. Uh, mainly the liver and gallbladder, but about 20% through the kidney. So if you have a fatty liver or a, a cirrhosis of the liver, or inflammatory state of the liver, hepatitis, or you don't have a gallbladder, or you're missing bile, or if you have any problem in that area, boom, thyroid problem, hypo. Also, if you have too much estrogen, okay? Say you have a hyperestrogen situation, um, that could actually inhibit the thyroid hormone, or you're taking birth control pills, or hormone replacement therapy, or consuming a lot of soy, which can mimic estrogen, that can inhibit thyroid function. Um, if you have Hashimoto's, which is really not a classic thyroid problem, 
it's an autoimmune, it's an immune problem that just so happens to be attacking the thyroid, that's a completely different uh, situation. You have networks of um, antioxidants that is made by your body and also you can take them from, get them from the food. And so you have this constant battle of your own cells killing off microbes, making things to kill off microbes and foreign pathogens. Um, and so those are like hydrogen peroxide, for example, that would be one of them. Your body makes it to kill off these microbes. Well, if there's a breakdown in the antioxidant system of your body, and maybe you're not consuming enough from the diet as well, that alone can cause a buildup of hydrogen peroxide and that can damage your thyroid. And in which case you have to restore that system again to actually kind of counter that. Now I have individual videos on each thing, so you can look that up, but I'm just kind of giving you a, an overview of what can happen. But so it's really rare to have a primary thyroid. It's usually secondary from something else. Okay. When you go to the doctor, always dig in and find out what causes the problem. Ask them like what could be underneath this. Don't just buy, well, things just happen for no reason and you just have to be very unlucky. Try to find out what causes it, especially if they want to treat it um, because a lot of times they treat it, they treat a secondary problem and they leave the primary problem alone. They don't look at it and then you never get better. All right, let's get to testosterone and I'm going to mainly focus on females for this, okay? What you need to know about uh, testosterone is that if a woman has uh, too much testosterone, or we're going to call it androgen, uh, many times that can come from not necessarily being exposed to androgens, but basically having too much insulin, okay? It's more dietary from too many carbs or too, too much frequent eating. So you might think, well, wow, I'm, I'm like, am I getting androgen from the, from the outside from something? No, no, it's being converted from another hormone. So that's what makes things very confusing. The other thing you need to know is that your adrenal glands, in addition to the ovary, makes testosterone. So if you have a hyperactive adrenal gland from some reason, that alone could spike your androgens as well. Okay, so now let's take it back to cortisol. Let's just kind of cover, if you have too much cortisol, you're gonna get belly fat, uh, allergies, diabetes, because high cortisol breaks down protein, your own body, and your body will start making more sugar as well. And you're gonna basically either turn your own muscle protein into sugar, or your liver is gonna make more sugar because cortisol is called a um, glucocorticoid. It's a hormone that makes glucose. So this alone can spike insulin. You can become diabetic just from having high cortisol or even taking prednisone, which is a medication, uh, a, a synthetic version of cortisol. Uh, racing mind, where you're thinking, analyzing things 24 seven, that happens and eventually you start having memory loss when that happens. So it keeps you kind of in a flight or fight mode. Uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, probably from the chain reaction from the high insulin. And then we have low vitamin D levels. How many people have low vitamin D? I mean, it's like across the board. Um, round face, uh, rosacea, which is uh, kind of a red cheek situation. Low tolerance to stress. You can also have all sorts of immune problems with white blood cells, but I don't want to, I'm trying to keep it simple. All right, hypo, low cortisol. Uh, here are the symptoms, poor immune system viruses coming out of remission, weight loss, you start losing weight. Okay, you might say, wow, that's a great thing, um, but it's probably not because you're not gonna actually be healthy. It's not the healthiest way to lose weight. Yeah, you, your skin becomes a little bit darker, like you get a tan. Um, again, not this is not healthy. Vitiligo, which is those little white spots or a loss of pigment on the, on the skin because cortisol does influence the melanin, salt cravings. You're going to be losing a lot of salt if you don't have uh, enough cortisol and also enough adrenal hormones. There's other hormones involved. Um, so you're going to be basically taking all the salt all the time and you actually need it. Estrogen, hypo, that means low estrogen. Depression, dry skin, zero libido, hot flashes, night sweats, poor memory, insomnia, vaginal dryness. Other than that, you're perfectly fine. Then we have a hyper estrogen state that's too much. We call that estrogen dominance. Uh, breast tenderness would be one symptom. Enlarged breasts, fibrocystic breasts, which are cysts in the breast or cysts in the ovary. 
And this is why a sea kelp works for that because the iodine helps to regulate and lower excess amounts of estrogen. Fluid retention, heavy cycles, okay, excessive bleeding, then you get anemia from that, heavy cramping, weight gain in the lower part of your body, the hips, the butt, and the thighs, saddlebags, PMS. Again, other than that, you're good to go. I would probably avoid dairy. If you have any problems with the ovary, it's probably going to help you, especially if you have a fibroid, for example. Now, if you're going through menopause and you have estrogen problems, you should probably support the adrenal because that's the backup organ with that. And then if you're on birth control pills, just realize that can be a contributing factor. And you really want to do organic, non-GMO because of the chemicals involved. So you have to eat really clean if you have this problem here. Now, as far as the thyroid goes, if you're a hypo, um, not enough thyroid, you're going to be tired, depressed, dry skin, dry hair, loss of eyebrows, okay, especially in the outer part. I don't think I have a problem with that. Okay, brittle hair, hot flashes, night sweats, weight gain all over, not in any location because the thyroid hormone innervates pretty much every single cell. And it increases mitochondria, which control the metabolism. That's why you're going to have a slow metabolism. And um, so that's why you kind of gain weight everywhere because everything kind of is sluggish. Constipation. That's hypo. Hyper. Too much thyroid. Excess sweating. Nervous. You're hyper. High pulse rate. You have these uh, protruding eyeballs. Uh, insomnia. Your cycle goes away and you lose weight. Okay, now let's talk about testosterone in women, by the way. Hypo, hair loss, decreased sex drive, depression, fatigue. And you can see fatigue is kind of a common thread with everything. And this is why when people are fatigued, you really have to look at the whole thing because you can be fatigued from so many things. Um, loss of just drive. Your get up and go mojo has gone and left the building. Uh, vaginal dryness, weight gain. Okay. Hyper, too much uh, testosterone. Okay. Again, this is probably coming from high levels of insulin or could be coming from an overactive adrenal, but you can have hair loss, acne, deeper voice, facial hair, polycystic ovarian syndrome, okay? So I just wanted to kind of give you um, an overview of what can happen to the endocrine system, some of the symptoms with high, too much, or too little of a hormone. Okay, so now that you kind of have a summary, it's a little complex, but... The real important thing to do before you start diving down and taking remedies and supplements for any of this, you have to get your basic eating corrected. You have to clean up your eating to the point where you're not doing any chemicals in your food. It's not, no longer toxic. Um, you eat very, very healthy foods. And I have a video down below of what to eat, but get that in first for a while and then see if any of these are still there. All right. Thanks for watching. So I want to know about what you think about this video. So please comment below and tell me what you think.